Yes, uh, thank you very much. Wait, no, it, it's, it's, it's working, can you hear me? Yes, okay. So let me start with a very simple example uh, today, uh, just uh, with example of discrete sign process. Discrete sign process. So this is just a measure on uh, zero one. Ah, so this is Stefano. Now I can take this opportunity to thank the organizers, and just it's a very great pleasure to be here. And in fact, so much it is true that uh, my very first international conference in my life was in this very hall in '98. So the time is going fast. Okay. Yes. So it's a great pleasure to be here again. Uh, okay. Uh, so uh, now uh, this is just a measure on. Uh, the space of binary sequences. And uh, I, will use, uh, I will use slightly unusual notation. So let me first write it in usual notation, but then in a little bit unusual notation. So the probability of uh, a cylinder given by uh, so many uh, ones at such at given positions i n equals 1 is given by determinant n times n, determinant s alpha i k i l, k l from 1 to n, and s alpha of x y is by definition equal to sine alpha x minus y over pi x minus y. So this is understood as, uh, by so to speak, L'Hopital rule, even if x and y are integers, alpha over pi if x equals y. So clearly, uh, the kernel S alpha only depends on the difference of the uh, values. And so this measure is, by definition, stationary. It's not obvious that such measure actually exists, uh, so that this formula actually gives a measure. Uh, this result is called Maquis-Soshnikov theorem. Uh, for French physicist Odile Maquis and Russian mathematician Alexander Borisovich Soshnikov. Uh, so, okay, so, but such measure exists. And uh, uh, th this is the first example that we shall study today. Uh, let me say uh, how this measure appears. It appears in a uh, study of Young diagrams. So if one considers large Young diagram, large Young diagram, and for example, one, uh, one draws it in the so-called Russian way, so like this, emphasizing the symmetry between columns and rows. And if one considers uh, the Configuration, so what a young diagram one can assign binary sequence. Is it possible to see when I write there? Is it okay? Not down. Okay, let me, be, uh, let me draw it here. So if to young diagram <coughs> one assigns configuration, uh, so by putting a particle or by putting the symbol one in position where the graph of the diagram goes down, where the graph of the particle goes down. Then one obtains distribution on space of binary sequences. And in the limit, so if now one considers the limit as n goes to infinity uh, of so-called Plancherel measure, in the limit here, in the bulk of the diagram, one gets this discrete sign process. Uh, which is how it was introduced by Borodina, Kunkov, and Alshansky. So discrete sign process is, of course, a uh, very close relative of the usual sign process of uh, Dyson. And uh, in fact, the sign kernel is very similar to the, uh, the discrete sign kernel is very similar to the usual sign kernel. So one takes function f, one takes the Fourier transform, one restricts to the interval from minus alpha to alpha, and takes the inverse Fourier transform. So this is the form of this kernel. Okay, so a lot is known about the discrete sign process. This is 
a uh, very uh, interesting uh, dynamical system. Uh, it is uh, chaotic, so it is, it's Kolmogorov and in fact even Bernoulli. So Kolmogorov by work of, uh, Kolmogorov system by work of uh, Lyons, Russell Lyons, and in fact even Bernoulli by work of Lyons and Steiff. Uh, just excuse me one second. Yeah, sorry, excuse me. What the? That's an excellent question. So alpha, uh, uh, that's an excellent question. In fact, uh, I did not say this, but in fact, alpha is the position of the observer. So the, lo the limit depends on where you place yourself, where you look at, at the limit. And in fact, if you place yourself at position alpha square root n, um, uh, let's say a square root n, uh, then this alpha is the, so what is it? The cosine of alpha is 2a. Okay, so uh, one has to be careful that this a should be strictly between minus 2 and 2. So I, I, if it's equal to 2 or minus 2, then it's a different situation. But here it's in the bulk of the spectrum. So al alpha is the position of the observer. Okay, uh, so... Um, in continuous case, of course, all, uh, there is no alpha because uh, uh, there is homotity. So all these kernels are equivalent up to homotity, but in discrete case, they're all different. Okay, so, uh, so it is Kolmogorov and Bernoulli. At the same time, its spectral density has spectral density uh, of just the characteristic function of one has a uh, zero at zero, so this is the form of the spectral density in the neighborhood of zero. So in particular, the variance, the variance of the number of particles, number of particles in uh, minus n to n grows as logarithm of n, grows as logarithm of n. So it grows very slowly. Precisely because there is zero of the spectral density. Okay, on the other hand, the number of particles, number of particles minus expectation uh, over square root of the variance, of course, satisfies the central limit theorem, which is a result of kostin lebovitz and also Soshnikov. So... in greater generality. So, in fact, uh, the fact that this density has a zero, that spectral density has a zero, it is relatively uh, easy uh, to show, and uh, this was, in fact, done by Kolmogorov in the 1920s, so that the position, it's, I think, 1927, that if I consider the stationary process in broad sense corresponding to this system, so I just consider the, se the sequence omega n just considered as elements of L2, then omega zero belongs to span of omega, to span of omega n, n not equal n non-zero. So this is quite, unusual situation. So uh, let us look at this property more attentively. Uh, if I know the configuration in the complement of zero, so it is convenient for me to represent configuration as a collection of particles, so a binary sequence. Uh, uh, so in position, uh, if omega n equals to one, then this means that I put a particle here. So if now at zero, so if I know the configuration in the complement of zero, so beyond zero, then this configuration determines, in fact, what is here at zero, almost surely, whether it's particle or whole. So, and this follows, again, it, 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 this follows from the form of the spectral density, but in fact, this, was, this is a result of Gauche and Perez from... Uh, uh, 2000. So, in fact, in this case, it's a result of Gauche, and in a, a different case, it's a result of Gauche and Paris from 2012. Uh, so, uh, Gauche essentially reproved, used the argument, reproved Kolmogorov's lemma in this situation. Uh, uh, more generally, one can take a bigger window, 
So window from minus n to n, bigger window. So, and then uh, the config, it follows from the work of Gauche and Gauche and Perez. Uh, so that the, config, the configuration outside of the window determines, so this is what they call rigidity, rigidity, rigidity. So configuration outside the window And again, configuration, I just mean binary sequence where I put particles in positions where the binary sequence has one. Configuration outside the bounded window. The bounded window. Determines, determines the number of particles. The number of particles. Number of particles inside. Of particles inside. So this is the result of pe gosh of particles inside. So in fact, uh, this is uh, a little bit a paradoxical property of this, or uh, uh, how to say, property of this model that goes in the opposite direction of chaos, right? So it is not possible to put one more particle. It is not possible. So the configuration outside of the uh, outside of finite window determines the number of particles inside. So this raises a natural question, is there anything else? Are the, is there anything else that the particle outside knows about what is going on inside? And so the main result of this talk is that no, there is not. And uh, uh, so now I'm ready to formulate the main result in this particular case, main result. So this is on the archive. Uh, so, and it is that the measure PS alpha, so this measure that I defined here, let me write it like this, PS alpha, PS alpha, uh, is quasi-invariant, is quasi-invariant, under the action of the infinite symmetric group. Under the action of S infinity. So the infinite symmetric group, the group of finite permutations, the group of finite permutations of Z. Permutations of Z. So the infinite symmetric group, it's a countable group. It naturally permutes uh, the entries of the uh, sequence. Uh, and uh, um, so it naturally acts on uh, the space of sequences. Uh, and uh, the, the statement is that the measure is quasi-invariant under this section. It's quasi-invariant under this section. So radon nicodym derivative will be found explicitly. Uh, I will find it explicitly, and uh, to motivate uh, uh, the analogy, uh, just uh, I will give explicit formula. Okay, let me f let me first write the formula, and then I will explain the analogy with Gibbs measures. So uh, the radon nicodym derivative is the following. So if I act by permutation, so let sigma pq be just permutation of two say, of two positions. Sigma pq permutes p and q. So, and let's assume that, so sigma pq permutes p and q. So then the radon nicodym derivative. So, and it is here that I want to start changing notation a little bit. So instead of uh, denoting binary sequence by the symbol omega, I will uh, denote, uh, so again, uh, I will use slightly different notation because I will also use it in, the, in more general situation of which this is particular case. So I will denote uh, my binary sequence or my configuration by x. So x, so this space of binary sequences, it is space of configurations. And so con uh, configuration on z, and uh, I, uh, configuration will be denoted by x. By x I, is a collection of particles. So particles are positions where the ones are. And so instead of this, I will write like this. I1, I n belong to x. So, uh, in other words, uh, the measure is just measure on subsets of Z. 
configurations are simply subsets of that. So the formula doesn't change, but it will be more convenient for me to write it in this notation. So at configuration x is equal to some constant times product x minus p over x minus q square, where uh, product is over x in x, so product is over all particles, and uh, so which one goes on top, which one is at the bottom, so if q is in x and p is not in x, and obviously the product is taken by all particles except q. Okay, so this is the formula for the radon nicodym derivative. So there is a question here, in what sense does this product converge? So it converges in principal value. So what do I mean by this? Clearly this product, uh, so it's product over all particles x in my configuration, but the configuration is realization of stationary process. So particles have some frequency. And clearly this product diverges absolutely because harmonic series diverges. But uh, this product uh, does converge conditionally in the same way as, for example, one can write sum one over n over n and z equals zero. So in this sense, this sum con uh, uh, diverges absolutely, but it, but it converges in principal value. So precisely in this sense of principal value is understood this product. Okay, so let me uh, formulate, let me explain the analogy with Gibbs measures. So analogy with Gibbs measures. Uh, the constant does not depend on x. The constant depends on p and q, of course. The constant is just constant of normalization. The constant is just constant of normalization. Constant is just constant of normalization. Okay, so clearly if P and Q both are inside the configuration or both do not belong to the configuration, then this quantity is just one. But when, uh, when one, so when the permutation actually does something, as in this example, then this is, so to speak, the price to pay. So analogy with Gibbs measures. So if I have Gibbs measure corresponding to Hamiltonian H, then, uh, so uh, if I have P Gibbs measure corresponding to Hamiltonian H, uh, let's say of pairwise interaction with Hamiltonian H, then the corresponding uh, radon nicodym derivative uh, will be just exponential uh, well, up to a constant, it will be exponential of the sum h precisely px minus hqx over all x. x obviously not equal to q. So precisely for Gibbs measures, how do I say, the permutation will, uh, if, I, if the particle goes from uh, uh, Q to P as here, then of course interaction with all other particles, uh, how do you say, the potential of the interaction precisely will enter the radon derivative. So uh, then this result can be understood in the sense that it is some analog of Gibbs property with uh, potential 2 log x minus y, with Hamiltonian 2 log x minus y. So this is uh, this is uh, the meaning of this result. So I formulated this result in uh, this specific case, but in fact the result is much more general. So uh, there is, there is uh, first let me say very briefly about previous work and about why this, uh, how do I say, why it, is, it could be natural to expect such formula for radon nicotine derivative. So the main example that motivates study of determinantal point processes, let me erase here, is, uh, the, is uh, the, uh, one of the main objects of, let's say, theory of random matrices, uh, the uh, orthogonal polynomial ensemble. 
orthogonal polynomial ensemble, which it is possible to consider in uh, both in discrete and in continuous case, orthogonal polynomial ensemble. So, product i minus j, x i minus x j square, product rho of x i, i from one to m, dx i in continuous case, but it's also possible to consider in discrete case. So these uh, orthogonal polynomial ensembles, uh, in the limit, they give, uh, they give, um, Determinantal point processes. So, in particular, sign process uh, ar arises as the limit of such orthogonal polynomial ensembles uh, with Hermit polynomials. Uh, other processes arise in different uh, situations. But it is clear that if one considers such uh, orthogonal polynomial ensemble, even maybe in discrete case, let's consider some orthogonal polynomial ensemble in discrete case, and one considers the action of the permutation sigma PQ then it is clear just from the formula that uh, the form of the radon nicodym derivative will be, like, will be this. So it is just clear from definition. So I substitute x1 equals p, I substitute x1 equals q, and I divide. So this is just, this is just the form of the radon nicodym derivative. So, and in fact, uh, as I said, this result has predecessor in the case of so-called gamma kernel, gamma kernel, determinantal process with gamma kernel, which is not stationary, uh, which is uh, just uh, a different example of determinantal point process, Grigory Alshansky proved uh, this quasi-invariance in 2011. So in 2011, proved quasi-invariance for gamma kernel and Roughly, the idea of Olshansky's argument, and he obtained similar expression for radon nicodym derivative. It's similar, but there is also one important difference. I will explain it a little bit later. Uh, the expression is similar, but different in important way. I will explain this. So, uh, but uh, it is, so to speak, ideologically very similar. So Olshansky's argument, Olshansky approximated gamma kernel by finite dimensional approximations of this kind and obtained the formula for radon nicodym derivative by passing to the limit of finite dimensional approximations. So the difficulty with this, and in fact one can see uh, the paper of Olshansky, uh, it's long and there are many computations, the difficulty with this is that it is very non-trivial to pass to the limit in a statement that two measures are equivalent. Two measures may be equivalent, but after passage to the limit they can stop being equivalent. So it's not, observe that the radon nicodym derivative is not bounded. It's not bounded, it can be arbitrarily large. So the fact that this uh, statement survives limit transition requires a lot of effort. So, and Olchansky did it in the case of gamma kernel. So the argument in my paper is completely direct. It avoids limit transition. And it works in uh, substantially greater generality. I formulated the result for sign process just for concreteness. But in fact, uh, the result works for a very wide class of determinantal point processes, and uh, namely, determinantal point processes with integrable kernels. So again, we keep uh, our eye on the uh, orthogonal polynomial ensemble here. So uh, it is well known that uh, such uh, measure is determinantal. I can write this like this, determinant Kn xi xj, where, uh, xi, where Kn, uh, Kn is Christoffel Darbuk kernel. Is Christoffel Darbuk kernel. But Christoffel Darbuk kernel it has uh, its kernel of the projection on the first n orthogonal polynomials, but Christoffel Darbuk kernel has integrable form. It is up to some constant, Pn of x, Pn minus one of y, minus Pn of y, Pn minus one of x over x minus y. 
so now uh, the point is that uh, in many examples, while this is not, uh, there is no reason for this to hold a priori, but in many examples, this integrable form is preserved under limit transition. So in many problems, uh, it is very typical that the kernel of our operator has integrable form in the following sense. So, and again, there are many examples. Of course, the sine kernel, which we uh, just saw. For example, the airy kernel, where uh, it's the functions A and B are the airy function at its derivative. The Bessel kernel, which arises in the study of singular values of random matrices. So where the Bessel functions arise as uh, the in the kernel uh, in this integral form. So the gamma kernel of Olshansky where A and B, for, so for gamma kernel, A and B are uh, expressions involving gamma functions. A, is, uh, A and B involve gamma functions. Let me not write the exact formula. It's just some ratios of gamma functions with some shift involve gamma functions, gamma functions, gamma functions. Okay, so these kernels arise in many examples. So, uh, and the result, again, is completely general. So it exists in a discrete and continuous case. So let me start with formulation in discrete case, and then I will uh, give formulation in continuous case as well. So in discrete case, in fact, there is very little to change. So let pi be integrable kernel, integrable kernel of projection operator, kernel of projection operator. And then, uh, then the result stays the same, but there is one important detail. So the important, so the result, and the result stays completely the same. The result stays completely the same, but there is one important detail, namely uh, this detail with principal value. So uh, the definition of this multiplicative functional is uh, the following. So the uh, the meaning of multiplicative functional is the following, that one takes, so what, does, what is this by definition? By definition. This is the limit as n goes to infinity of this product x minus p over x minus q square over x less than n divided by the expectation of the same. Divided by the expectation of the same. So this is just normalized product, and then this limit, this is exactly what we consider. I should say expectation with respect to what? There is a little technical detail. Expectation with respect to what? Not with respect to the measure, with respect to the conditional measure uh, corresponding to the condition that there is a particle in Q. Let me write it like this. So this constant still remains, but it's immediately computable. Expectation with respect to this. So. In this sense, the result stays completely the same. I would like to stress, however, that the meaning of the limit transition can be very different depending on the specific model. And in fact, I will illustrate this precisely by the example of the gamma kernel. 
So gamma kernel arises again in the study of Young diagrams. But in fact, I just redraw this picture. In fact, by very definition of Young diagram, so it is clear that configuration which codes Young diagram uh, has very special structure. So clearly, there are, since we put particle when the configuration goes down, so and we put hole when configuration goes up, like this, so uh, clearly, by definition, beyond the di Young diagram, there will be only particles. There will be only particles. To the right, beyond the Young diagram, there will be only holes. So, in, on the right, uh, on the right, I have not very many particles in a sea of holes, and to the left, I have the opposite, not very many holes in a sea of particles. Okay, uh, so when one takes the limit, the limit uh, which leads to gamma kernel. This situation remains to some extent. So gamma kernel is not stationary. And it is true that the sum of inverses of particles converges on the right, and sum of inverses on holes converges on the left. And therefore, the meaning of this, let me just write g of x, the meaning of this normalized functional is completely different from what it was for sine process. For sine process, normalized functional, it was just the usual functional. So uh, this quantity is just a constant. And in fact, uh, the limit, uh, if, uh, in the case of the sine process, this limit, it was just the limit. But in the situation with gamma kernel, it will be completely different. It will be the following. It will be product of g of x over x greater than 0 particle times, so this normalized product times, so in fact, it will not be x and x anymore, because it will be product of g inverse of y times y less than 0, and y is a whole. Pardon me? g is any function. For example, g in, in this example, g is x minus uh, p over x minus q, but it doesn't matter. G is any function of the form 1 plus something small. So, but the point is that, how do you say, in gamma, so in the example of the gamma kernel, this, in the example of the gamma kernel, uh, this uh, procedure gives a complete, this procedure of regularization gives completely different result. So it gives product of particles over positive particles, product of over holes on the negative side. Because, of course, so to speak, product over, uh, product over holes how do I say, product over particles, in finite, in finite situation, product over particles times product over holes, right, is, is equal to a constant, is equal to product of G over everybody, right, so constant. So clearly, product over particles is up to a constant, the same thing as product of the inverse function over holes. But this quantity survives limit transition, while this one doesn't. Okay, so uh, uh, up to this important uh, remark that the meaning of principal value depends on the model, the result is completely the same. And in particular, I stress that the form of the radonic dim derivative does not depend on specific process. So it's the same for all processes with integrable kernels. Okay, so now let me uh, formulate the result in continuous case. So the result in continuous case, it's actually very similar. Uh, there is in continuous case, main result continuous case. Uh, so again, so now it will be a measure on configurations on R. So uh, continuous case of R or maybe R plus. So again, pi is projection operator, pi uh, locally trace class projection, trace class projection on R. Projection. Hey, uh, who, whose kernel has integrable form? Kernel has integrable form. 
And again, uh, the examples apart from the sign process, examples are, for example, Airy process or Bessel process. And I, let me note that for these results, for these process, rigidity uh, also holds. And this is a little note from 2015. So uh, rigidity also holds for all these processes. So, okay, has integrable form. Um, then the measure, this pi p, is quasi-invariant. Under the group, the group of diffeomorphisms of R with compact support. Diffeomorphisms of R with compact support. Under the group of diffeomorphisms of R with compact support. And uh, the formula for the radon nicotine derivative is, has similar Gibbs form. So I take some diffeomorphisms with compact support. I take some configuration F. F has compact support, so let's say F is equal to identity to the complement of some open set V. Okay, so then uh, the formula is the same. Again, product is regularized, uh, and I put X minus F P X minus P square, so P is in V, P in X in intersection with V, and X not in X, but not in V. So, and the formula is completely the same. Uh, one can ask, uh, uh, it's possible to choose the set V in different ways. It is possible to choose the set V in different ways, and so in particular, so to speak, to develop some, if I may say so, parasitical points, which are actually fixed points. So when f of p is equal to p. But this will not uh, imply any change in the form of radon nicotine derivative. So uh, this much, uh, so this similar result holds, again with this clarification on principal value, holds for the case uh, for the case of continuous, continuous determinant process. Yes? P is in V and X is in complement. So, excuse me, uh, maybe it's not, okay, let me re rewrite this. P is in V and X small is in complement. So, it's just the same as for Gibbs measures, interaction of those who move with those who do not move. Okay, okay, okay. There is, of course, also, uh, there is, of course, also a uh, ratio of, there is, of course, also ratio, of, how to say, interaction of those who moves, of I, I, ratio of interaction of, of, of those who move between themselves. And also, uh, of course, the product of derivatives f prime of pi. Okay, there, there is, of course, interaction of those who those who move between themselves. Okay, there we go. P f of f of pi f of pj. Okay. Okay. So let me very quickly say uh, just two words about the proof. Uh, the proof uh, is uses uh, the main point is the equivalence of so-called palm measures uh, for uh, determinantal processes. And uh, the main point is that uh, it is, in general, uh, difficult to check that it is not easy to check the two measures. Uh, I'm sorry to say such a banality. But it's not easy to check the two measures are equivalent. So that just if you have two measures given a different way, how to check that they're equivalent? It's not immediate. Uh, but uh, it is possible to check in simple way that two determinantal measures are taken one into another by multiplicative functional. And this is 
again, a little observation uh, from Russian Medical Surveys 2012. So that just, if I take multiplicative functional, so multiplicative functional being just product of, va of values of a function over particles in a configuration, so the ad it's possible to think of it as Laplace transform of additive functional. Usually one considers additive functional, but in fact, determinantal measures interact very well with multiplicative functionals. Okay, so then the statement is that if I consider determinantal measure and I multiply by multiplicative functional uh, and I normalize, so I normalize so that it is probability measure, then in fact, it is a gain determinantal measure, a gain determinantal measure where kernel transforms in very simple way. Namely, if P is projection onto L, onto L, onto some subspace L, then PG is projection onto square root of GL. And again, it's very clear if one thinks about orthogonal polynomial ensemble. If I multiply orthogonal polynomial ensemble by some multiplicative functional, then this is just product. I put G in the weight. So precisely, this will be the same. So what is, what is Christoffel Darbu projection? It is projection onto polynomials times the square root of the weight. So precisely, if I multiply measure by multiplicative functional, it comes down to multiplying the subspace by square root of G, which is exactly what is written here. But in fact, it's true not just for orthogonal polynomial ensembles, but for all, this is true in complete generality, for all determinantal point processes. This is just completely general fact uh, with very short, it's an observation with very short and simple proof. So uh, I would like to stress that it is very important that here it is convenient to work with range of operator. It is not convenient to work with kernel. I would like to stress that even if I consider some super classical orthogonal polynomial ensemble, the one you like most of all, Jacob, Hermit, uh, Legendre, whatever you like, and I multiply the weight by some function g, it is not possible to say how orthogonal polynomials get deformed. They get deformed in some very complicated way. So only if g is some very simple special function, for example, fraction linear, something like this, it's possible to say how they deform. But in general, this transformation completely, how should I say, destroys the kernel. If I have some nice kernel, then for if P is some nice kernel with some super nice formula, when I modify it by G, there is nothing. There is no nice formula anymore. On the other hand, it is possible to say this. So this statement, it is possible to verify directly. And this verification is what lies at the bottom of these uh, points, or, or of these uh, proofs. So one uses the result of Shirai Takahashi from uh, 2003 that palm measures of determinantal point processes are the same, are themselves determinantal, corresponding to a subspace of functions which are annulled at a given point. And then, so if I, for, if I, I said LP is subspace of functions in L, which are take value zero at a given point. You might think I'm writing some kind of nonsense. What does it mean, L2 function, which takes value zero at a given point? But in fact, since my function is range of operator admitting a kernel, uh, it's fine. It's, this is well defined. And so this point is reduced to verification of this kind. L of P is equal to X minus Q over X minus Q, L of Q, something that is completely immediate for polynomials. In fact, we all know that polynomials that take value zero at given point uh, are divisible by x minus q. But in fact, it's also possible to prove in much greater generality, in fact, in the generality of operators with integrable kernels. And just to finish, I want to formulate one more case of this result. Uh, just uh, so uh, one other situation where uh, such uh, re result clearly holds is the situation of Hilbert spaces of holomorphic functions. So, and uh, in the situation of Hilbert spaces of holomorphic functions, this is joint work with uh, uh, Yan Shishu from uh, CNRS, 
so uh, in 2015. So uh, the result is the following. One can consider Hilbert space of holomorphic functions in two situations, so to speak, on the Euclidean plane and in the Lobachevsky plane, so on the C and on the unit disk. So in the first case, this is Geneva ensemble, and this is just the space L is just Fox space, and the uh, kernel is this. And in this case, this is Bergman space, and the kernel is the Bergman kernel. So, and this determinant point process, by the way, was studied by uh, Perez and Virag. This is process of zeros of Gaussian analytic function. So this process of zeros of Gaussian analytic function are determinant point process with this kernel. And so in this case with Yan Shishu, we obtain similar results. I should say that in this case, uh, using approach of uh, Olshansky essentially, using approach of limit transition, in this case, uh, there is work, simultaneous work, a bit earlier of Osada and Shirai. Uh, but in this case, and I want to finish with this, in this case, everything is the same except the formula for radon nicotin derivative. So formula for radon nicotin derivative. It becomes different. So instead of, so in fact, such formula does not make any sense, does not make any sense in case of uh, disk. Just this product is just completely meaningless. So in fact, in this case, one has to consider ratio of Blaschke products. Blaschke products in the, same, in the same way. Let me not write, so the chair is looking at me with reproach, so let me not write it completely, but let me just say that instead of usual product, there is Blaschke product. Thank you so very much.